This is a continuation of geostatistical analysis tutorials. In the previous tutorial, you used the inverse distance weighting method to perform interpolation. Um, so before we move on to Kriging, uh, let's look at different ways you can explore the data. For example, let's look at the histogram of the data. So um, if you look at this window, there's the histogram and uh, the type of transformation that can be performed to the data before you look at the histogram and the source of the data. So first of all, you need to look at if you have the correct uh, file. So in this case, Las Vegas weather stations. And we want to make sure that we are looking at the correct attribute. So notice it has uh, elevation, but we are look we we are interested in the histogram of the temperature. If you do that, you will see that um, clearly uh, notice that there's a scaling factor of 10 to the power of minus 1. So there are a lot of uh, 72s uh, and some intermediate values, but it seems like this particular data set is not uh, very normally distributed, which makes sense because we are looking at a city and most probably we are looking at a snapshot of city at one time in the more in around noon time so we are seeing the noon temperatures everywhere so we we would not expect this to be a uh, normal distribution but um, if you are looking at say uh, some other data variable that do have normal distributions you will s see the the distribution curve but um, to see uh, other uh, statistics you can look at this little box at the top and you can turn off or turn on this box um, you can see how many data points are there what is the minimum maximum value what is the mean value standard deviation uh, skewness kurtosis which are uh, the the values that tell you about how close this could be to normal distribution um, so on and so forth also increase or decrease the number of bars um, that are used uh, to create these bins uh, and as I mentioned earlier transformation tells you if you want to take the log of the values before you plot them so now these x-axis values are log of the temperature uh, which uh, can be useful in in certain c cases where the temperature uh, is has a very large range and um, so this is how you can look at the histogram of the data um, I I I uh, data in a point file. Now in a similar manner you can also look at the uh, you can find out how well it is uh, how, how well um, is the normal distribution representation of the data. So again the source must be selected and the variable or attribute must be selected and you can see why uh, the the data is not really normally distributed if it was it all the points would lie along this line and since they are not they're kind of stratified and that uh, shows how this data is not uh, normally distributed and you can look at normal QQ plot to get that um, idea. Now you can always convert into log plot and see if that changes to normal which is mostly unlikely so um, this is how you can use normal QQ plot. Also you can do uh, look at the trend analysis now this is spatial trend analysis so if uh, you look at this it shows you a plot and shows you the curves of the data how it is changing uh, in space. Now you can rotate the locations or rotate the graph. In this case let's rotate the graph so that we can have a uh, an idea of what we're looking at. So you can rotate in different ways. So that is north. Um, let's look at that. So um, yes, yeah, so we have the north, south, and west and east directions and if you look at this data set you can see how um, the, the the data points the height of the data point is the value of the temperature and then on this plane and this plane we have the projection 
of the data points so uh, if you see all of these points so if you're going from east to west in Las Vegas the temperature is goes uh, down a little bit and then is going up this morning and if you are going from north to south again the temperature is um, low in the middle and then um, this is keep in mind that this is a fit pro probably a quadratic fit to the data and it's not necessarily the representation of this data because this one outlier is throwing off all the points and again this is showing the trend of all of these values projected onto that plane which is not always uh, a good representation because the there is a lot of variability in the cities now if this was a natural terrain then you would see more uh, representative uh, variation but urban areas are really complex in terms of temperature variations um, you can turn on and off different parts of uh, these uh, uh, graphs but overall this tool is useful to look at the trends uh, in some directions for example east west or north south or overall see how it looks like now you can always rotate the locations and see how they the, notice how the trend changes when you rotate the locations and you can uh, play with this and see different ways um, or you can actually look at the data projected in different directions and see how it is varying uh, for those directions um, we also have the Voronoi map and if you it, it will actually compute the Voronoi map which is one method that we talked about in class it's a generalization of the uh, Thiessen polygon method and you will see that it has created these uh, Voronoi plot uh, of using the data points that were available and again this is this has done it for elevation you have to make sure that you're doing it for temperature and it recalculates and shows it to you and if you look at if you compare your Thiessen polygon with the um, with the the output that we got from uh, the interpolation of inverse distance weighting you would see that there are hot spots similar to what we saw earlier but now we are looking at polygons created from uh, the Voronoi diagram and uh, in a similar manner you can look at the semi-variogram for this data we talked about the semi-variogram in the class and you will see that this is um, this is the lag and this is the semi variogram value and you can see how this data does not have uh, uh, a very good uh, correlation and um, th there is no model that can be fit into this data but if you had a data that would that would have a uh, spatial variation that can be represented with a with a curve then that is used for um, semi variogram uh, but th that was elevation if we change it to temperature we actually even see more bizarre behavior in this case so this is the distance and that's the semi variogram value for different distances and as the lag increases we have all sorts of numbers uh, in, in, in our data set And so this is how we can look at different, um, different. Uh, we can explore the data for different behaviors using the explore data tools.